Hello everyone, Computers 42 here, back again. Um, I want to apologize, I did not get what's on deck up yesterday as usual. Again, I got roped into some work, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to do a try to get through a quick look at the majority of the main stuff right now. Um, as far as Kickstarter is concerned, if it was, if this, I've mentioned a lot of pro projects over the last few weeks. If it was failing, it's still failing. If it's funded, obviously it's funded. And there's some that are close to funding. Uh, I'll mention quickly the Day of the Dolls deck is now funded. And the Honey Bee deck from Penguin Magic is 90% funded and it should fund. Let's look at some new stuff. Uh, first of all, there's a new deck from Collectible Playing Cards, the Bicycle um, Natural Disasters series. Earthquake Edition, it's currently 79% funded, it's just a matter of time. Their Neo Classic deck is also getting close. And it's similar to their previous Wildfire and Volcano decks, aside from it's a brown color. There's another deck, it's called the Star Kings deck, it's a relaunch. It's currently 35% funded. It is by the SVI Group. The biggest problem I have, and I think other backers seem to have, is the fact that the quality of the cards is a big question mark, a big unknown because it's by, they're producing it themselves, it's not MPC or More Arts or Legends or USPC or anything like that, it's, they're producing it themselves, they didn't say the quality is going to be, you know, good, like USPC or not better, I don't buy that, and too many times I've backed projects other people with back projects where the quality or the company that was producing the cards was a mystery or question mark and it did not turn out good. So my recommendation is don't bother it, don't back it. I would say if it ends up being good and it'll be available later on, you can always get it. Um, one just launched today, it's the Dante Alighieri Infernal Decks from Passion Playing Cards. It do recommend checking out. It's currently 22% funded and rising. There's two decks, the Cosito and the Daiti, being produced by Legends, and they are based on uh, Dante Alighieri, of course. Um, demonic type decks, dark you know, type decks, but very well done. And if you've seen his Avernum decks, it's a similar theme. It's like a, you know, a sequel, if you will. It's basically Dante Inferno, is what it is, if you've heard of that. So they're very nice, I like it, I recommend taking it out. Then there is the Crazy Cats by Diane Tomlinson, or whatever name she's going by now. It's 60% funded, obviously she's the ex-wife of Robert Tomlinson, based upon what happened. I really don't trust her or respect her to back anything she puts out. And quite frankly, it looks like it's just a reprint of what she already did previously, which shouldn't even be on Kickstarter. And like I said, it's currently 16% funded. I think probably most of the people who would want that already got it previously. It's an uphill battle, it may or may not fund. She was supposed to relaunch a Crazy Dogs deck on Friday, I think it was, it never happened. I don't know when that is gonna happen, but it should happen eventually. I also find it questionable that she used her account to back a game she put out on a different account under a different name and yeah I don't know why it's just, it's questionable I don't like it oddly enough Robert also backed that project <laughs> um but yeah I, I just don't really trust it because of what she did and that was basically taking all the stock of uh, Robert's decks and selling it at bargain bin prices like five bucks each or whatever, basically devaluing everything he had, and that's not cool. Next up, there is the Right of Kings. It's twenty eight percent funded. It's not looking too good. The artwork is pretty good. They look pretty nice. There's two decks available: a red and a blue, I believe it is. It's basically a knight in kingdom type theme. It's part of a game that you can also get, uh, but it's not attracting a whole lot of backers for some reason. 
Then there is the Bicycle Runic Royalty. It has relaunched again. It's 52% funded. Four days left. It is a one-week project based upon the all or nothing, whatever it is that um, Kickstarter is doing right now. It's going to be a thousand decks, bicycle branded, made by USB-C. Um, so far, they're halfway there and halfway through their time. Whether or not they get there or not, I'm not sure. Looking for four thousand dollars, a amount they have not been able to hit thus far. And if they manage to get every backer they had in the last project back, it will still not be enough. And so far, they have not done that. Uh, next up, there's a new deck from Jackson Robinson called the Arthurian. Two decks actually available on that one. One of them is the Excalibur. Decent price, 12 bucks. A lot of people on the forum is not excited about the artwork. And the second version is the Camelot, uh, which is like 36 bucks. Three times the price, and I don't think it's worth it. And I'm actually currently not backing that project because I'm just not feeling the artwork too much myself and because I'm tired of him pushing such expensive decks and just he's, he's pricing people out as far as I'm concerned. A lot of people on the forum are not backing it, apparently. He has funded. These are going to be produced by expert playing cards. The Camelot version has a different back design and his typical modified court cards where he takes the court card from one deck and then he adds in additional elements on the faces well, he does that with most of his decks. Um, the back designs probably could be a little bit better. If they are a, uh, you know, it's a basically a Celtic theme, and they're fine, and I might end up getting the Excalibur, but I'm definitely not paying 36 bucks for the Camelot. The special thing about the Camelot is that it's basically a box, a tuck case within a case. There's a tuck case, this now fairly standard red tuck case, I guess, plain. And it comes inside of a case that looks like a book and flips open like a book. The problem is Jackson Robinson has failed now numerous times to deliver what he promised one project was supposed to have a metal case for the cards. It's been changed to a wood case. The legal tender was supposed to have holographic, uh, holographic strips on the cards just like your money does. That's no longer in there. And, I mean, it just seems like he, he's trying so much stuff, but he doesn't bother to put in the effort to determine if it's actually feasible and doable before launching it on a project. And that's turning off people for sure. It's turning me off. That's why I'm not getting it. Because he's made no guarantees or assurances that we will actually get what we paid for, like with previous projects. But he's still getting support. He's funded. Next up, there's the Alien Empires. It's 7% funded, not doing well at all. I think it's the alien characters and artwork that's on the, the cards that's maybe turning people off a bit. They're not bad, they're well done. Uh, definitely, you know, recommend checking it. checking it out, having a look. If you like it, great. If you don't, so be it. Um... <clears throat> And then next up, we have another one that just launched on Saturday. It is the Origins Shadows of History, and there's also a second deck, which is the Ruen 1567. These are from Rick Davidson, currently 57% funded to be USB-C produced. Um, you can check out my review on his previous Origins deck, the first one he did, the original Origins. <laughs> there was two versions, the Origins and the Origins Grail, both very nice. I really like them. They're highly, highly recommend checking these ones out. The decks, the very, they have different back designs, and the Ruen 1567 features vintage-inspired court cards. They're both kind of inspired by a vintage deck, but the the Ruen 1567 has your vintage-style court cards with a full-body one-way court card. Very nice. I like it. Definitely recommend checking out the Origins decks. And then there is. Bicycle Double D by some magician from France who apparently is known as Double D or Dr. D, I guess it is. It's currently a measly 2% funded. It's not going to happen. He's looking for 30,000 euros. Not a chance in hell it's going to happen. Two decks available. The Bicycle branded one is a more standard deck with a 
pretty plain back. The D's in the center, there's like four D's. It kind of reminds me of the Dan and Dave logo. Um, and it does have markings on the, the edges for suits and values, also told you the position in the mnemonic stack and whatnot, good for magicians. Although it might be a little bit easy, too easy to read. <laughs> And then there's a second deck that's supposed to be a gaff deck that's available. And stretch goals for a blue colored deck. This one's a red colored deck. But the problem is, it, why? Why would somebody want to, why would magicians want to buy a deck with somebody else's name or logo on them specifically? And especially since this is catered towards magicians. I mean, obviously if there's David Blaine or something, or Chris Angel, definitely it would sell. It would be more popular. But some random guy from France that nobody's ever heard of, nobody's going to be interested. And you can just get standard bicycle decks, standard bicycle mark decks or gap decks, and probably for less money and the more appealing and more attractive. Then there is a fully premium deck. It's 0% funded. This looks like a bad imitation of a Fontaine deck. Yes, it's got Fs on it. The back design has a weird coloring to it, an element to it. I can't even recall exactly how to describe it. The faces, they have custom pips, standard court cards, unexciting ace of spades and jokers, and just the back design just not great. And nothing premium about it. It's just it's not good. It's not going to fund. And then there's the Bicycle Divide of an Ace of Bite. Robert Tomlinson, Barclay Mountain. It's 38% funded. This is a relaunch of his previous attempt. Second deck in his series of United States inspired decks. I do recommend checking it out. It's a nice deck. And finally, we got something to talk about from Illusionist. There's a new set that they put out. It's called the Erdnays X Madison, whatever you want to call it. Erdnays Madison, Madison Erdnays. It is a set. It's the, the complete set is 99 bucks, and you get not not even a DVD, it's downloads, I believe a book, and two decks, a black one and a green one. They seem very similar color-wise, and they are extremely exciting, and I'm not planning to get them, um, unless they end up selling them by themselves, and I get a better look at what the cards are, but the back design just features squiggles going down towards the center. I mean... Did he design that himself? Just go, oh, shit, oh, wait, look at that, I can use that for a back design. <laughs> he just doodling one day and he goes, wait a minute, that make a back design. Uh, it's horrible. It's, I don't know how I feel about slapping the Udney's name on that. I don't know how I feel. I, I'm not excited about the illusionist, you know, taking Udney's stuff from his book for the most part and, putting it out on video and selling it themselves. That's almost like copyright infringement as far as I'm concerned. If that's what they're doing, I'm not 100% certain, but I think that is more or less what they've done is they've taken Erdnaser's stuff and put it on video and sold it themselves. You can get just the decks and I think the download or the book for like 35 bucks or something, but I'm not going to do that. Anyways. That is that. That's what's going on this week. Nothing else that I can think of to mention. I know this isn't the standard what's on deck video. I apologize for that. Next week it should be... Well, actually, I don't want to say that. Um, I will probably do a regular version Thursday and look at all the projects on Kickstarter and whatnot and go a little more in-depth and stuff like that. I probably won't be available next Sunday again. So that's why I'm going to do it Thursday. So that is that. Comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.